You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. The options market can be a confusing place. Sorting through the daily avalanche of data, alerts, updates, articles, and analysis to find the most important information is an overwhelming prospect. But now you have help. Welcome to the Options News Rundown, the only program that breaks through the noise to bring you the most important news and information from the world of options. Every day, we bring you the top five option stories curated by the options experts at theoptionsinsider.com, the premier source for options information. The Options News Rundown is brought to you by Market Taker Mentoring, the leader in options trading education. Get trader education, daily trade ideas, and more with a free one-week trial of Market Taker Mentoring's Live Advantage Group coaching class by visiting markettaker.com slash insider. And now it's time to break through the noise. It's time for your Options News Rundown. Good morning. Today is February 5th, 2019. This is your Options News Rundown. I'm Dan Passarelli. Our first story of the day is from Investing.com. It's the top five things to know in the market on Tuesday. First thing to know is President Trump's State of the Union address is coming. President Donald Trump will make his annual State of the Union address to Congress at 9 p.m. Eastern. Trump signaled last week that the speech will include extensive remarks about his standoff with Democrats over building a wall along the U.S.-Mexico border, the subject of an intense bipartisan battle that prompted a 35-day partial government shutdown. Beyond the wall, a senior White House official said that Trump will outline what he sees as areas where Republicans and Democrats may be able to find agreement. These include a plan to fund infrastructure improvements across the country lower the cost of prescription drugs, and work to resolve long-standing differences over health care. Whether the two sides are prepared to work together in any significant way is far from clear, with tensions still high over the shutdown fight and another deadline approaching February 15th. U.S. futures point to a higher open is the second thing to know today. U.S. stock futures pointed to a slightly higher open as market players looked ahead to a key speech from President Donald Trump and another batch of quarterly earnings. Elsewhere, European stocks were higher, with nearly all the major bourses across the region in positive territory. The Pan-European Stocks 600 Index reached a nine-week high, boosted by gains in banks and oil sector stocks. Earlier, shares in Asia closed mixed. Trade was light, with markets in Greater China, Taiwan, South Korea, Singapore, and Indonesia all closed for the Lunar New Year. Third thing to know today is Disney earnings. Dozens of companies are expected to release earnings today in one of the biggest waves of the earnings season. Most of the focus will fall on Disney, which reports after the close. The media giant is expected to report adjusted earnings per share of $1.54 on revenue of $15.07 billion, according to estimates. Investors will be closely watching the results to see whether Its growing efforts to take on Netflix in the streaming space are starting to pay off. Disney recently announced it will launch its direct-to-consumer streaming platform in September of 2019. Other high-profile names releasing quarterly results today include Viacom, Archer Daniels Midland, Ralph Lauren, and Estee Lauder, which are all set to report during pre-market hours. Joining Disney after the bell will be results from Snap, Electronic Arts, Anadarko Petroleum, Tableau Software, and Paycom. The fourth thing to know today is oil prices hover below 2019 highs. In commodities, oil prices held within sight of their best levels of the year, buoyed by expectations of tightening global supply due to U.S. sanctions on Venezuela production cuts led by OPEC. 
U.S. West Texas Intermediate Crude Futures were at $55.14 a barrel. That's up 56 cents or 1%. They touched their highest level in more than two months at $55.75 the previous day. International Brent Crude Oil Futures were at $62.95 a barrel. That's up 43 cents or 0.7%. Brent rose to its highest level since December 7th at $63.63 on Monday. The American Petroleum Institute will release its weekly report on U.S. crude stocks for the week ended February 1st at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And the fifth thing to know today is with key data from the Commerce Department still delayed because of last month's government shutdown, market players will keep an eye out on the Institute for Supply Management's ISM survey on service sector activity to gauge the strength of the economy. The survey, due for release at 10 a.m. Eastern, is forecast to inch down to 57.0 in January from the previous month's reading of 57.6. The U.S. dollar index was up 0.1% at 95.68. In the bond market, U.S. Treasury prices dipped pushing yields a tad higher across the curve, with the benchmark 10-year yield rising to 2.73%. Our second story of the day is from CNBC.com. Cryptocurrency customers are unable to access their coins after Canadian CEO's death. About 180 million Canadian dollars in cryptocurrencies have been frozen in the user accounts of Canadian digital platform Quadriga after the founder, the only person with the password to gain access, died suddenly in December. Uh, Gerald Cotton died at age 30 from complications with Crohn's disease while volunteering at an orphanage in India, according to the Facebook page of Quadriga CX, which, is, which announced his death on January 14th. The platform, which allows the trading of Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum, filed for creditor protection in the Nova Scotia Supreme Court last week. Quadriga has 363,000 registered users and owes a total of 250 million Canadian dollars to 115,000 affected users, according to an affidavit filed by Cotton's widow, Jennifer Robertson, on behalf of the company. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is news you can use for today, February 5th, 2019, your options news rundown. I'm Dan Passarelli. Trade smart and have a great day. The options news rundown is brought to you by Market Taker Mentoring, the leader in options trading education. Get trader education, daily trade ideas, and more with a free one-week trial of Market Taker Mentoring's Live Advantage Group coaching class by visiting markettaker.com slash insider. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider or via questions at the options insider.com. 